I'm ready. All right. Let's welcome to Totally Driven Radio, Mr. Reggie Wu. Reggie, how you doing? Great. How are you? We finally got it together. <laughs> I, I know. I apologize for the last one. I, I felt awful. I was just like, oh, my God. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's quite was, all right. Oh, man. So you got to talk football? <laughs> we talk everything. Anything That's to awesome. do with entertainment. We talk That's sports. Awesome. We talk music. We talk TV. We talk every friggin' thing under the sun. Wow, that's fantastic. I, I was just like, do I have the right number here? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, um, you know, because I always listen to the sports radio, so that's what caught me by surprise. You know, I listen to them. whenever I'm in the car, I'm always like either Mike or Mike or WIP here in Philly. Where are you at? Are you local? Yeah, oh, yeah, I, I'm Delaware County boy. Okay. Okay, I wasn't sure even before I was calling, but uh, so you know, yeah. so every time I get a chance, I'll listen to a little bit of sports radio. So it's pretty cool. So I yeah. like Nick Foles. <laughs> See that? There you go, Frank. We got two for Foles. Yeah, I mean, I, and you're gonna hate me, and I'm even saying this out live, and everybody in the world's gonna hate me. I'm a Cowboys fan, but. Uh, you know, I, I I root for the Eagles because I'd, I'd love to see them do well. My father-in-law is a huge Eagles fan. I would love them to win a friggin' Super Bowl. <laughs> you know, now, they gotta I, win I, one. I gotta you know. ask. I gotta ask. You're being from Philadelphia. How how are you a Cowboys fan? They were just the the team growing up that was always on TV. You know, and Stallback, Pearson, Dorsett. Even I go back to even before that with like Craig Morton and and you know all, like the the, the Jethro, <laughs> like like all these like old guys, you, you were just fascinated, you know, by this this team, and uh, and then you just you just follow them, and somehow it gets it gets in your blood, and and I always followed them, and then I really it got to the point where I was like insane with them, and I, they would like lose, and my week would be ruined, and I'm like this is stupid, you know, so now I've really <laughs> backed off. They've been people are like, oh you're a front runner, I'm like I'm a front runner. We haven't won anything in 18 years. How am I a front runner? <laughs> you know, the Powerball, you know? We won one playoff game in 18 years, and I'm a front runner. You know, so I'll never forget Mark. We were, like, somewhere, I don't know, the truck or something, and uh, Mark, like, stops the show, my singer, and he's just, he just announces, you know, Reggie's a Cowboys fan, and the whole place is, like, booing me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. that, that that could be, like, risking your life. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. I remember uh, going to the Mummers in the Cowboys jacket, and, and uh, like people were like, were like literally like hating on me. I was holding on to my baby daughter at the time, and I'm like, I got a little girl. You can't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. you know, I, I guess I'm that kind of way in baseball because like my favorite team in baseball is the Yankees, and okay. it's kind of like that same thing. Like growing up in the '70s as a kid, you know, the Yankees were all over the place, winning and constantly right. seeing them. And then when I, my first um, team I played in, like, uh, softball when I was a little kid, I was on the Yankees. And we made it to the World Series. So ah, it just – Right, right. Yeah, so it just stuck with me all these years. And you still are a Yankees fan. I'm still a Yankees fan. As a matter of That's fact – That's awesome, yeah. I, the last time I went not, – not the last time I went, but I went and saw the Yankees when they came to Philly. I guess it was, like, four years ago. And I wore my, uh, my, Lou, my Lou Gehrig jersey. And I was like, I'm going to get killed. I, I'm really oh, going to get killed. And nobody said, yeah, nobody said nothing to me. I was surprised. Wow. Well, maybe Lou Gari. I don't know. I mean, that's like iconic, you know. But uh, yeah, I mean, the Philly fans can be definitely crazy with that. But you know, I, I do it all in fun. I, I don't take it real seriously. I have nothing. To, I figured I have nothing to do with the team. You know, my father-in-law was on an airplane with Troy Aikman, and he it took everything in his might to ask Troy Aikman for an autograph for me, and Troy Aikman like blew him off. And um, really. Yeah, my father in law's a big successful businessman and uh and he just said I'd rather not. You know, he was just like my son <laughs> son in law loved and uh you know what? I was just like, you know what, that's just how it is. Like they they don't know me, I don't know them, I've nothing to do with them, you know. But what's right. cool is one of my students right now from like nineteen ninety three is the host of the Drew Pearson show. And oh, that's very no cool. Yeah, so it's cool to see like your students uh, go on and be super successful, and, and I, I look on his, you know, Facebook wall, and there he is with all these cowboy greats. You know, every cow wow. know, like I'm like, that's so cool. So he's, he's doing that's well. Wild. He came up to the Philly show. He flew in for the Philly show and gave me a, a signed Drew Pearson thing, and uh, and it's it's you know, and it, but here's a cool story. My student from like eight years ago. I haven't seen them in forever. They were at a convention 
about a, a couple months ago, and Tony Dorsett must have been the guest speaker. And the husband and wife looked at each other and said, Reggie. Now I'm honored <laughs> that they even thought of me. And so the other day I'm looking out my window, and this gentle, older gentleman walks up to the house with a football signed by Tony Dorsett. They went out and like, got a football and had the guy sign it. I'm like, wow, wow. you guys, that's so nice that you guys thought of me. Yeah, so that, that's that was awesome. Very nice. Yeah, so you know, I don't even collect the stuff, you know, and uh, <laughs> you know, but I, I I have it here in my room. And one one more thing is I teach at a Montessori. I teach music. You know, Montessori is like a preschool. You know, I have fifty three to five year olds, and um, and uh, it's, it's I'm like their music teacher. You know, we're trying to do Christmas songs or whatever. But this little girl, I guess last year or two years ago, says. Oh, my brother plays for the Cowboys. Somehow it came up that I was a Cowboys fan. And I'm like, she's like, my brother plays for the Cowboys. Oh, and I'm like, oh, it must be like the Morristown Cowboys or something, you know. <laughs> and the next week she comes in with a Phil Costa jersey. And her brother's Phil Costa. And apparently he's what? from this area. And uh, a signed Phil Costa jersey. I was like, get out of here. That's very, that's incredible. And then I heard he's like marrying Brooke Hogan or something. And I'm like, I don't oh, know. That's too funny. So, so now it's like you you are like collecting sports cowboy sports yeah. by by uh... <laughs> <laughs> never collected a thing in my life and now I have all this stuff here. So Oh that's too funny. Now, so that's uh, here 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 here's a funny story for you, and this has to do with you. Okay. My 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 first memory of Reggie Wu. I'm gonna go back to Uh-oh. nineteen I think it might be eighty six or so. Okay, Cinderella's wow. album comes out, and Jeff Labar does an interview for some magazine. Yeah. And they talk. They ask Jeff about how he got the job in Cinderella, and he talks about how he did the tryout. And there yes. was a guy that was before him, Reggie Wu. Yes. And I totally he said, remember this. <laughs> do you remember the interview? Yeah, it was Circus Magazine. It was Circus. Uh, okay. He was just like. He was like, uh, the only reason I remember it is because my my wife was like really like upset about it. I was like, who cares, you know? But he said something like, all of a sudden he started playing, and all this horrible noise came out of his amp, dumb wang, dumb tang, or something. I forget how he worded it, but Jeff's a good guy. He was just trying to, you know. And uh, but I was like, great, I'm in Circus Magazine, and I'm getting trashed. <laughs> <laughs> that that was my first. Ever. Yeah, I mean, that's the first thing I thought of, like. It was funny, like, and then, you know, I guess it was, like, two years later when Heaven's Edge debuted? I guess it was, I don't I'm not sure of the time frame. I just know that they went, I, Jeff was the perfect person for that band. And, uh, you know, I, I was, like, in Yin Bay Malmsteen phase at that point. Right. And, like, and it would be, like, nobody's full, nobody. And I'd be, like, like a boo <laughs> 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 it, it didn't fit at all. <laughs> You know, I was oh, like in that funny. mode at that time, playing harmonic minor modes, and uh, and nobody's full. So that's funny. So. so how did you um? When did you start playing guitar? And all? Uh, my mom's a classical piano teacher, so age three, four, you start on the piano, and uh, oh wow. So they, you know, my really strict with the music. Coming from an Oriental family, they just um really music. It's all about music, and uh. You know, I picked up the violin, I guess, in third grade, and then in fourth grade, I picked up the guitar, hated the violin, moved over to the guitar, and I, so I guess maybe third, fourth grade, I've been playing forever, it feels like. Wow. And, um, and that became my main instrument for, for many years. And um, It's funny, like, my parents, you know, being from, from China, from Taiwan, first generation, it's all about music, 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 and so I was like this dorky Chinese kid growing up here in Cherry Hill, and all of a sudden, in seventh grade, I start becoming popular for being, you know, this Chinese kid who can play the guitar, so of course I'm going to gravitate towards my guitar, and um, so that's, you know, I just gravitated towards that, so by ninth grade, I knew that's all I wanted to do, and uh, my parents, you know, the they were like, no, you can't be a musician. I'm like, what do you mean I can't be a musician? You pampered me my whole life. And they're like, no, you got to go be a doctor. And um, <laughs> I know. I'm like, what's that all about? So, you know, I, I got expelled out of high school. You know, I just knew in, oh, really? in ninth grade. Yeah, I knew in ninth grade that that's all I wanted to do. And uh, and so I moved out of my parents' house. My parents, you know, it's it's either their way or you're out. So I was out at 16. 
and um, just living on my own and just, you know, okay. poor, couldn't rub two pennies together, and um, just played in a million bands and just did whatever I could to play. Wow. I know. Yeah, it's pretty wild being on your own at 16. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy. I moved into a house where um, a friend of mine, Gary Bimman, and uh, he owned a landscaping company, so... Um, you know, we would cut lawns all day, and then I'd go play at night. And, uh, you know, I was kind of estranged from my family. Not really. I mean, this they, they had moved out to Medford, and I stayed over here in Cherry Hill. And, uh, and I guess I was 19 when um, my brother tragically died, and that just brought us all back together. Uh, he was 15. And, um, you know, after that, we were like, I was like, okay, family's the most important thing in the world. And uh, my parents were like, okay, let's, you know, so... In in that sense, we all got back together again, and uh, and you know we're close as ever. And uh, my brothers and sisters are both doctors, totally successful. And uh, here I am, just the, still trying to find life after rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I gonna do? <laughs> wow. So so that's pretty crazy. So, so your brother and your brother and sister, you said, are, are doctors? Yes, my sister is the prodigy of the family, piano wise. At age twelve, she's she toured the world playing the piano with like 80 piece orchestras. We have video footage of her as this little girl with like an 80 piece orchestra in China, Norway, Spain, like Italy. She just, and here I am playing the galaxy. You know, my little <laughs> shredding me <laughs> in, in the game of music, you know. But, um, and then she turned 18. She was the baby of the family. And uh, she turned 17 and said, you know, that's it. I'm done with music. And, Went on to UPenn and is now a doctor. Now, are uh, you, were your parents professional musicians? Like my mom's just a classical pianist, a teacher, and she's incredible. Now that I teach, I just see her. Um, her, like every year, she she does this competition thing where the kids just end up they play Carnegie Hall, like these ten year olds, ten to fifteen year olds, and all her students. Like I, I forget what it was. Like fifteen of her students played Carnegie Hall last year. I'm like, that's amazing, wow. mom. You know, like yeah. I. I've never had one student play Carnegie Hall, you know. So it's her, and she's just amazing to detail, you know, with the classical music and uh. So, but there, she's super, super strict, and I'm so thankful that she hammered me musically because without it, I don't know, I'd be working, you know, at the McDonald's down the road. I have no other <laughs> skills, you know. <laughs> you know, I can't basically. You know, failed out of high school, and that was it. That was the last part of my education. Did try to go to Camden County. My, like I said, my father-in-law is a very – he got me this killer job at RCA, and they sent you to school at night. And um, I just knew that wasn't for me. You know, and uh, I remember um, having, like, cutting all my hair off, and we were getting close to the Columbia deal, so I started growing it back. And, uh, just, you know, it was all about the hair back then. Sure. And um, – and, I remember, like, the guy calling me in and saying, you know, you got to cut your hair. And I'm like, so I went out and bought this short wig and tucked all my hair in this hair net and wore this wig. <laughs> really? Yeah, 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 it's RCA Camden. And uh, and uh, it was ridiculous because it totally looked fake, and they laid me <laughs> off anyway. They probably just took it as a slap in the face, you know. My poor father-in-law, he was probably like, oh, my God, what is this? What is my son-in-law doing to me? You know? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So. Now, when, when Heaven's Edge got together, here, here's another early thing I remember. Um, I remember seeing an article about you guys in, I think it was Out on the Town, and it was like a little like little blurb with a picture of you guys, and it was uh, you know like a little two three paragraph write up. But it seemed like to me, like from what I, and this is what I remember, was it was like almost like a super group out of the area. It was like. Guys plucked from all like the top bands in the area now formed together. Oh really? To wow. Well, Mark was Mark was probably the most popular of all of us. He he was in that band Network. Remember them? Right. They were just awesome. They were great, and um, they were. I loved Network. I actually felt bad that he left Network, and um, we'd go see them all the time. And but that was like the cover thing. Even though they would mix in their originals, which were unbelievable, mm -hmm. they um, you know, they did their, they were the top cover band in the area and but me and Mark started writing and we just really had a great chemistry and um and uh so I couldn't believe him when he when he left the band and um so maybe that's what the article's referring to because Mark was 
you know, the, the top guy. Dave was from um, – Dave was going to college, the drummer at, at Villanova. He okay. came in just in an audition, so we didn't know him. George, I guess, was very popular. You know, he had played with, I don't know, Saints in Hell maybe. I don't, I'm not sure what bands he played with, but okay. he just always looked great on stage. And I remembered, like, right at the top. And Steve was in audition, and somebody had recommended him to us. So, uh, But I guess, you know, Mark – and I guess I was in White Fox, but I don't think White Fox was that big at the time. But I, I, I kind of had a name, I guess, in the area. Yeah, I mean, bit. White Fox had like a little. I mean, they had a, a history in the area. Yeah, so maybe that's what the article's referring to. But Mark's definitely the name that that brought it over. And I remember Mark's name because Mark's a bass player. I remember him right. saying, um, "How about if I just sing?" And I'm like, "That would be awesome." You know, because he was demoing everything. I'll have to dig it up and I'll send it to you. So I was listening to some of the old demos of. Uh, some of the songs on my little old four track, like Skin to Skin and Find Another Way. They sound it sounds <laughs> terrible. <laughs> oh, that's but, uh, funny. Now I I think I was at like the first couple shows you guys did at the Empire, like the old ages shows. Okay. Did you guys they were fun shows, it, weren't they? Oh man. They they were the friggin' best. Them them yeah, all yeah. ages Sunday shows were the absolute best. Yeah. It was it was um, like a thousand degrees in there. But it was yep. just the energy. The energy coming out of the place was spectacular. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, how lucky were we to get to watch, like, Britney and Cinderella and Tangier, like, just watching these bands? I mean, we're Amazing. really lucky. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, that place, I, I never really, I, I, when I got to get to the Galaxy, uh, they had already closed and reopened. And it oh, wasn't okay. The, but, okay. um, yeah, but I, the Empire, I mean, the first, my first Empire show was Cinderella's last show there. Oh wow! And That's from an that night on, show. I was hooked. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how cool is that that we got to see? I mean, Tom to this day is like the rock star from this area. He's awesome. You know, yeah. he's just he's just awesome. And, and you I know what? The, I saw him on the Letterman show just recently, and he was just as good as back then. Yeah, how about that? Like that? That's funny. Like. That he was on, I don't, I, you never saw Cinderella on Letterman, right? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I don't know, maybe Cinderella was, was too too heavy or something? I, I don't know. And maybe his, I don't his know. stuff nowadays is more mainstream and, you know, and I, uh, yeah, you're right. That is, that is, I'd be, Cinderella was much bigger. Yeah. And, um, I don't know how that stuff works. We you know, we never got to that, that, um, that height, you know, where you would do shows like Leno and stuff like that, but, uh. I've even heard that oh, you, you know, record companies can pay to get you on those shows because it's oh yeah, you know. But I have no idea. But Tom's basically doing all this on his own now, right? Does he have yeah. a label on him? You know, I think I mean, he's doing it on his own. Yeah, I mean that's fabulous. So yeah. No, but no. Tom to me, Tom John Karabi, you know, he's from this area. He's yeah. awesome. I just saw like some post about uh, the, that one Motley record that John did with them. And um, you know, it's all of a sudden like getting this new, new energy. You know, Metal Sludge just voted as the top crew record, and so I clicked on it, and the songs are great. I'm like, why? I love this- that album. Oh my God, that power to the people. I'm like, what a great song. Why isn't this- why did people album. why did people not like that? You know, I, I mean, the- I guess the article went on to say everybody just wanted Vince, but you know, John just kicked butt with that band. Yeah. Oh yeah, that, you know. As a matter of fact, the first time I met Karabi, um, it was probably like ten years ago at a uh, like a Kiss convention in, in King of Prussia, and I said to him, I said, "What's it like to feel like to be the person to give Motley Crue a set of balls again?" <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, he is just kicking ass on that. On the couple songs I clicked on, and I'm uh, what a great record, and um, and he's still out there, doing great, still playing. So I don't know. You know, it's it's funny how this whole music industry works, and it's 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 even more different now than it ever was. I'm kind of glad I'm out of it. You know, like I see my students <laughs> out there. They're like, oh my god, the place was packed last night. There were like 70 people. I'm like, 70 people's packed now. You know. Yeah. It's a lot how about different. that? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Mark, my singer, when he pulled me out of retirement, he's just like, oh, I'm out there playing, and and it's incredible, and. So he said, why don't we start with an acoustic show at, at this place, the Cherrywood, over here in, in Blackwood or something. And honest to God, there must have been like 12 people there. And I'm like, this is not how I remembered it. <laughs> yeah, you, you know. know. It, it's weird. Like, uh, we had a band on earlier in the show, and I was saying that to him. Like, it, it's just weird how, 
like in Philly, and he was saying it was kind of the same up in Boston where they're from. Like, there's like no scene. Like, where did all them people go? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I mean, yeah. do they could just walk go to the cover bands nowadays? There is no scene. You're you're right right on with that. I don't know where what's going on. And it's I guess sad. maybe that we all just got older and. You know, kids and stuff like that, which is understandable. But okay, it but seems that's for like, our generation. But what about for the new kids? Why aren't there all yeah. their friends going to go see them? All the twenty-something-year-olds who are doing all my students who are doing original music. Why isn't there like a scene for them? It, it seems like the generation today, like they don't have. I, I don't know if it's dedication or um, the support, like how we would support bands and. Be yeah, they definitely don't have the support. Yeah, it's 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 sad, and um, but you know, I, I, I it's a whole different world. Nobody's buying CDs anymore. Everything's single based. You know, you buy the one song you like off of iTunes, and it's it's a real different world out there. And um, I, I don't I don't I don't understand it at all. Yeah, I have yeah, a couple, I have a couple of students really dedicated to work, just working as hard as I have worked, and they just you know, and it, they're. Playing like these dives, but I guess we play dives. You know, I remember playing someplace right off the of Delaware Avenue. I don't remember the name of the place, and then going like around the corner to like that place Maui, and there'd be like twenty five hundred crazy drunken people watching, you know, Crystal Rocks or something. And I'd be like, oh my god, I need to be in a cover band. <laughs> yeah, right. It, 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 you know, it, I don't know. It's it's weird. It's really weird. Uh, now. Back, speak, I mean, back in the dive clubs, I mean, yeah, the Empire was kind of a dive. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was great till George got shot, you know? And that's where, exactly where I was going. Like, Yeah. What was that? Like, what happened exactly with that? Some drunk guy got kicked out of the club earlier in the night and said, I'm coming back and killing everybody. And, you know, he was, and the bouncer was just like, go home. Get out of here. And um, the guy came up with a sawed-off shotgun. Me and my wife had left two minutes before George. I think it was like an MMR party that night for us. And wow. we had left two minutes before George. And um, I don't know, it was like two, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. And George walked through those glass doors. And he said he felt like he got electrocuted. And he took, you know, I don't know, 175 pellets all through his body, his groin. <laughs> everything was bleeding. And, uh, and I remember getting the call that night. And uh, and um, I was like, oh, do you think you'll be all right to do the gig tomorrow? And I remember Mark saying, no, Reg, we're hoping that he'll be alive tomorrow. And I was like, oh, my God, like I didn't know the severity of it. And, uh, wow. And the guy, we so George recovers. And the, let me just say the one thing, the whole Philadelphia community musically, like all these bands we didn't even know, like all of a sudden started holding benefits and raising like all the health insurance money because we didn't have health insurance. And they really, I mean... Wow, like I don't know any of these like Tommy Conwell and bands like that. I can't remember the names of the bands, but they all like really donated their time and held benefits. It was huge. Indoor. I remember. They, oh, I, it was huge. I, like the whole like, the whole musical scene of this area just rallied behind uh, you know George yeah, and you guys. It was awesome, and um, you know, and so George gets better, and we, you know, get back trying to do the record and start playing again, and so we're on the road. So George can't be at the court. States. And uh, I think that really hurt him. And the guy pretty much just walked. We had witnesses, wow. and yeah. And uh, I don't know the exact thing, but I just remember George getting the call. I think we were touring in Boston at the time, and um, George getting the call, just saying uh, the guy was, you know, got off. He was like the OJ of our uh, <laughs> of our little area, you know. And uh, so, I, I, you know, what's crazy? I wonder what that what's that guy's doing now, you know? Yeah, right. That's you know, scary. So. So, but he had like a couple of assaults before that. Like he had everything against him, but he had a great attorney, and we didn't. And I guess it hurt that George wasn't there. No, so, I don't know. That that would have been that. That's why George should have been on this interview. <laughs> Can answer all that, right? <laughs> this no. is true. Now, how yeah. about when the album came out? Were you were you happy with the the album? Uh, we were thrilled. We were thrilled. Working with Neil Kernan was like a dream come true. Um, you know, he'd come off the dock and in Queens records and uh, put a golden ear. You could just hear everything. And, you know, a lot of people said, oh, we got too polished. We lost the dirtiness of it, you know. But uh, 
leading up to these two shows that we just did, I put it on for the first time in 10, 15 years. And I'm like, oh, it still sounds really good. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think so. I think Neil did a fabulous job, you know. And uh, I know Dave and George would have liked it to be a little more dirtier, you know, a little more guns. And, um, you know, it's definitely very polished. But, I mean, that's what, what we were going for, like this uh, – that song hold on like i totally dave was so adamant about us maybe just using a real piano on it like a november rain i was like no we got to do the winger thing you know so that's why <laughs> you know and now i'm like ah we should have totally just done a grand piano <laughs> would have been so much better you know but when you're stuck in that era you're thinking it's got to sound like everything else which is weird sure. yeah? we got to sure. look like everybody we got to sound like everybody and that was the downfall of our, all our bands yeah, Somebody gave me a metal edge of like Heaven's Edge when uh, we were younger, you know, kids or something. And um, oh, I got it from Steve, and I'm looking through it, and every band looks exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it definitely like you saw like like in the mid '80s, it was more like the black and the leather and the spikes, and then it got like the little glammy, and it was like. Polished glammy, and then by like eighty nine ninety, it was jeans and the ripped shirts. Yep, yep. So, you know, I, I and it's funny we just did that show over in um, the UK, and we saw a lot of the bands that probably like achieved like the same like they got record deals like us, but never made it, and they're still out there plugging it like the Baton Rouge's yeah. of the world, and and um and they're making a living over there playing Europe. And, and uh, but it's just that's just not something that I, I would be interested in doing. You know, I'm way more happier with my family and just uh, you know, and just doing these last two shows were were fun. And I have my other band ever after, which I just absolutely love. And uh, you know, I have to get you a copy of that. And um, you know, just dipping my toes in there, but I'm not full out in there. So now, is that the first time you guys played over in the UK? Yes, it was the first time. And, How'd that um, come about? Kieran had has been asking us for years to come over there, and uh, just for one reason or the other, we always said no. You know, like we're like, why would we go over there? Nobody knows us. And we went over there, and it was it was incredible. Like this, they're like still in the mode that we were in the '80s or the '90s. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Everybody knew every word of every song that we did. Um, it was like rock star for a day. It was incredible. I mean, that blew me, like, the, I was thinking the same thing, like, wh when you guys were going over there, like, I was seeing on your Facebook, and I'm like, wow, they're really going to, like, England? That, like, will people know who they are? And yeah, exactly. Then when I, yeah, and then when I saw the videos, I was like, holy shit, like, holy they knew shit, all the words. Oh, my God. This radio station's like, I've been waiting 20 years to talk to you. I'm like, dude, you could have called. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm just... I'm just a regular guy, just at home working. Mark went over to Greece after that show and did an acoustic thing. And um, wow. he said, in Greece, we're like rock stars. They couldn't believe we had day jobs. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. I know. That, that's, that's cr that always amazed me, like, over in Europe, like, how things are so different than over here. So different, so different. And uh, so it was, it was a lot of fun. And now we're, like, thinking, oh, maybe we could, you know, do – you know, little shows here and there, maybe once or twice a year, and, um, you know, just go see see things. Like, I think, you know, we're going to, like, look into things. I I know that um, we're looking, like, maybe go to Chicago and do the Melodic Fest out there. And, nice. um You know, and just, like, and maybe do another. The Philly show was so much fun. It was like a high school reunion, the one that we did here, that, you know, we'll probably maybe want to do one more of them. And I don't know, just... One or two, and if I can do one or two shows with my other band, you know, I'd, I'd be a happy guy. Now, your other band is Mark in that band as well? No, Mark started in that band, and um, okay. Mark and um, and another guitar player, John, and we just we couldn't get going. We had so many disasters happening, like John's house burned down, oh, wow. and just yeah, just like we just had a lot of things going on, and we just you know we 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 pulled the plug on it, and me and Jim just said, Jim's the drummer who was in Cinderella, and we, okay. we, uh, Jim Dernick, and we just said, we love our songs, it's recorded, so we ran to Craigslist ad and found this guy in Denver, he of course knew Buddy Cash, who's one of the best bass players in this area, and um, 
just all through the internet we did this record and I'm totally proud of it and uh and it came out really good for just something that we just did on our own and uh so we flew in Chris Thomas from Denver for a show we flew him in on a Friday we rehearsed three times and we did a show at the World Cafe and uh it was insane I was like I can't believe we're doing the show we're playing you know 12 songs that we've never played with each other and um, we've only been together for a week, and but it, it went great. So now, you know, we said, oh, maybe we'll go out to Denver and do a show. Well, we'll definitely have Chris come in and do a show with us again. And, uh, you know, it's just fun, you know. And um, and and there's talk, you know, me and Jam are definitely going to write another Ever After record, and me and Mark are definitely going to write another Heaven's Edge, you know, and just see where it takes, to, you know, and just have some fun with it at this point. It's fun that now there's no pressure. It's right. like if it's – if if Three people buy it, and, and oh, well, you know, it doesn't matter anymore. I do it just strictly because I love it. And I've always done it just because I love it. I've never done it for anything else. But, you know, back in the day, we all wanted to be Bon Jovi. And, um, sure. You know, you know, but, you know, that never happened. And so now it's just, you know, we, we all have day jobs, and we're all working hard. And, and then we get to do this on the side and just have a good time with it. And it's much more enjoyable. So, so what have you been doing with yourself for the last so many years that the teaching, you haven't been? <laughs> yeah, okay. The teaching, but mainly uh, in '93 when you know Columbia dropped us, we I went into panic mode. I'm like, oh my god, what am I going to do? And thank God my mom always had me teaching. And on the, on the recommendation of my um, manager, he said, why don't you run an ad in Trading Times? Do you remember that magazine? Yeah, oh yeah, and absolutely. I, and I ran an ad in Trading Times. I got my first 17 students, and um. Wow. And I've just been been teaching ever since. And uh, this is my 20, 20th year. I'm going on my 21st year of teaching. It's insane. And um, Wow. I know. I was at school observing my 10-year-old, you know, how you can go in and watch your kid in class. And uh-huh. some lady walks up to me, and she's like, you used to teach me when I was a little girl. And I'm like, oh, my God. And, you know, she had her daughter there, who's the same age as my Eddie, who's 8, 10 years old. I'm like, holy cow, I'm getting old. This is insane. <laughs> But, um, yeah, basically just teaching. That's all I do. I work for uh, tel- uh, film and t- uh, radio, television, doing music, doing that with my partner, Jeff oh, Gordon. Cool. And um, just doing, you know, a million things, just whatever it takes to su- survive. What do, you, what do you think of, um, it seems today like um, the kids are a lot younger that are playing and having bands and are really freaking good. <laughs> oh, my God. My student just left. My old student. His name's Alex Sy. Keep a, a name out. Him and Matt House. Holy cow. Like, at age 15, they were like Marty Friedman and, uh, you know, the guys from Megadeth. I mean, they're, they're unbelievable at such a young age. And uh, I was like, holy cow. And uh, I have, you know, through the years, I've had a couple kids just really just blow your mind shredding-wise. And plus, they write great songs, and they, you know, they're grounded. They're not just all about the shred. There's definitely, right. some, you know, the, 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 I think the jumping off point now is higher. Like, I have students now where within the first year they're attempting eruption, and <laughs> you know, where, where like it took me ten years to get to that point. You know, so um, do you remember that band Funhouse? Yeah. Okay. Well, Mike Stanley, awesome guitar player. You have to see his son play guitar. Holy cow! He's like. I don't know, 14? I mean, he's got every Van Halen song pegged, solo and everything. And, and it's insane. I'm 50 years old, and I, I can't even play any of those Van Halen songs. You know, it, it's, it really is amazing. What do you think the difference is now than then, when we were kids? I think they have they have all these YouTube, you know, you can you can go right online and, and see. I, what was I teaching the other day? I was teaching The Clap by a Yes. And I'm okay. like, oh, so I punched it up on YouTube, and you actually, there's a video of Steve Howe teaching it to you. And I'm like, get out of here. Steve Howe's, like, giving a guitar lesson online, you know? That's a, that's amazing. Like, back in our day, we had an album. I remember trying to figure out, like, something fast. I would, like, put it on the slow speed, and it'd be an octave lower, and you'd have right. to, you know, figure out what notes they were. But, um, you know, the, right now the kids have so much knowledge that's out there that, I mean, you can punch up any song, and the, the tabs will come out. It might not be 100% right, but it'll get you going. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, I mean, what did we have? We had Dr. Licks. I remember that was, like, a big thing. And, <laughs> you know, like, 15th Fred, 
you will bend the high E string, and you know he would like, and it was like painful, but that's how we learned how to do all the Randy Rhodes solos and stuff. But uh, nowadays, you you can just punch up Crazy Train solo, and there'll be like, you know, a hundred teachers teaching you how to do it. And uh, as a matter of fact, I I wanted to bring Randy Rhodes up to you because I saw you had posted a couple weeks ago about the the documentary, the the Quiet Riot. Yeah, song. I gotta get that. Reg, I'm telling you, you have to get it. As a yeah, matter of fact, absolutely. I've become friends with the guy, Ron Sobel, who is one okay. of Randy's friends that made it. Um, and as a matter of fact, I, he, he tagged me on Facebook the other night we were talking. Yeah, phenomenal. It's oh, freaking I phenomenal. I mean, the book alone is really cool. It's a huge, big book. But the documentary, like, I sat and watched it, and I was literally, by the end of the thing, I was crying. Like, wow. I... I it was just, it's so moving, but it's all from the early years of Quiet Riot, and that's it. Like, wow. The guy oh, I gotta, Ron, I, I got to see it. You, you have to see it. Like, all the pictures that you ended up seeing, like, after Randy died, like, that started coming out, filtering out a little bit over the years. This guy, Ron's the one who was there the day that, like, Randy and Kevin met, and he was, he's a photographer, and he ended oh, up. Oh, okay doing all the pictures for them and all wow. the videos that ended up coming out of Quiet Riot, it's like the whiskey and all that over the years. Right, right. That's he him. did all that stuff, yeah. Wow. So he that's, put that's, it, uh, i got to definitely check it out. Now, it's does, phenomenal. Does Rudy have anything to do with this? Rudy is on it. As a matter of fact, Rudy's going to be on our show in two weeks. Ah, that's awesome. Yeah. you got to tell yeah. him that, uh, that, that I – had that Quiet Riot album, and I walked into the hairdresser and said, I want my hair to look like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was well, the coolest looking dude back then, you know? So funny. He actually put a book out. He put a book out called Off the Rails, all about Oh, me. really? Okay. That he literally, um, he ended up keeping a diary, and it was for tax reasons, but he had a day-by-day log of everything they did. Oh, so my God, wrote, Really? It's yeah. You have to read the book. And, I mean, uh, and that's different than the Randy Rhodes book thing, right? Yeah, the the, okay. the Randy Rhodes book thing is more like a, a coffee table book where it's all just okay. pictures. Right, right. And okay. then the because I saw that, something where Rudy was doing something about Randy. But, yeah, um, he did a book. It's called Off the Rails. It, okay. Phenomenal. Oh, definitely, definitely check it out. Yeah, Randy. You know, that, I mean, those two first Aussie records. You know, there's like notches in your life where you remember. Like just being blown away, and for me it was like you know Blackmore, then Eddie Van Halen, and then definitely Randy Rhodes. Like when those two records came out, I was like, holy cow, you know? Yeah. I I heard the second. It's weird. I heard the Over the Mountain record before the first one. I don't know why, and but I just remember hearing that solo to Over the Mountain, and being like, holy smokes, this guy's great. And, uh, Still to this day, that I that's one of my all time favorite solos. When oh, I hear that, God. I just yeah. Yeah, incredible. Love. And I had tickets to that show, and ah, you know, it got really? canceled, obviously. And uh, it's, it's it's so sad. I had tickets to Zeppelin, and then I think Robert Plant's son died, and then I bought tickets again to Zeppelin, and then John Bonham died. I had tickets oh, wow. to Ozzy, Randy died, I, and somebody was like, "Please don't buy tickets to my show," you know. I'm like, "What is going <laughs> on?" <laughs> wow. So, I know. So I mean, oh, that man. never got to see Randy Rhodes or Zeppelin. Yeah, no. I, I, me neither. I would, I would have loved, loved, loved to see Randy. Scary. Oh my god! Although I've seen videos of um, Gillis, I think he took over for mm-hmm. just a little bit during that show. He did a great job. Yeah, yeah. Back from no, we Ranger, were, he did a great job. We had a, uh, we had Jim Florentino last week, and I heard him talking on his uh, serious show the one day about seeing Randy Rhodes, and I asked him about it. He saw Randy five times. Oh my Blizzard god. Tour. And he got to meet him like three times because they were doing like wow. a lot of in stores. Yeah, I was I was like, oh my lord. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, Randy's just, you know, he's definitely one of the gods of guitar from my generation, and um, you know, he could shred, but he made it, he made sense, and you yeah. know, he, I, I mean, it was it was his his leads, everything, everything he did was just phenomenal. And the new guy that I love, and I still love him after all these years, is why I was just online just talking about with Nuno. I think Nuno is fabulous. Oh, yeah, I, he's, saw him on the, I saw him on The Voice the other day. 
oh, really? that show The Voice, and he was yeah. playing the guitar, and like I guess the three finalists were singing more than words around him. Oh, and really? I, yeah, and I'm like, wow, look at Nuno. He looks great. He looks exactly the same as he looked 20 years ago. But boy, can he play the guitar. He actually had a band a few years ago, I think with Perry Farrell. It was like a real weird band, yeah. though. Yes, I remember that. I, I I don't have it, but I remember when he hooked up with him. I have a bunch of Nuno solo records. I mean, they're all like really good. What a what a great talent! And he's playing yeah. with Rihanna now. Oh really? Yeah, he's Rihanna's guitar player. You know, so I'm sure he's you know making making a good living with that. And um, no kidding. Yeah. So that's weird. <laughs> I know. It's, it's weird and, where people end up. Yep. And she and she uh, she lets him shred because I see him take guitar solos and stuff on stage. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. So very cool. 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 So, sorry. So what do you got coming up next for you? Um, really, you know, we're just going to, like I said, maybe line up the next couple of shows next year, and uh, going to maybe start writing some Heaven's Edge and Ever After songs, and uh, you know, just just have fun. And you know, the main thing is. Really, just have fun with music now, and that's all. That's what it's all about. I'm totally into like my teaching with the kids because the kids, you know, they're the ones who are going to be carrying on the next generation here. And um, you know, we got to get these kids rocking. But yeah. other than that, nothing big, nothing big at all. And I'm, I'm, I'm totally happy with that. If I can uh, make it to the next after what you know, all the things, you know, the ups and downs of life. You know, I'm, I'm all, I'm good with uh, just you know. Being alive the next day and and loving love, love my family love my kids and that's what it's all about. Nice. That's it. Very very cool. Well, well, definitely thank you so much for having me on. And uh, thank if you, I do get some of that, oh, let me see who's calling me. Oh, my <laughs> daughter's calling. <laughs> so, my wife. It's funny. My wife and daughter they're up at that show. Um, Mob Wives. Did you ever hear of that? Oh, of course. Yes. Yeah. Well, my, Big my wife. Yeah, big hands. My well, my wife grew up with with Alicia, who is uh, the new blood. You know? Oh, she's like be- you know they're like best friends since childhood. So my wife and daughter are up at the premiere, and um, I guess the show debuted tonight. And yeah. um, they're up they're up in Manhattan right now, and uh, and we'll see we'll see what's going to go on. But I guess my daughter's just leaving the show right now, and is just texting me right now. So that's funny. Yeah, love that show. Good yeah, wow, well, I've never seen it, but I'll, you know, def- we'll keep an eye out for Alicia. She's awesome. She's great, super, super nice, and uh, you know, it's insane, you know, what kind of life that whole mob life is, you know. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. <laughs> yeah, so, that's for sure. <laughs> so, cool. Thanks, Red, so much. It was great thank talking you, to you. And, uh, Absolutely, yeah. buddy. And thank you again for having me on. Yeah, man. I'm I, believe me, it was an honor, and I'm happy to be friends with you now. Absolutely. Keep in touch, buddy. I will, definitely. Take care, man. Take care. I'll talk to you later. I'll see you. Bye. See ya. All right, everybody, there he is, Reggie Wu from Heaven's Edge and the band Ever After. Phenomenal, phenomenal talent. Got to hear that Heaven's Edge album. It's a classic. Love it, love it, love it. Ah, So, Frank, you still there? <laughs> 